Hey guys, so I'm kind of editing, I'm editing, I'm adding this in <clears throat> while I'm editing, so it's going to kind of do a weird jump into the video, but I almost forgot, and I want to uh, not forget, I want to say thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers. Nobody has left many comments, so I don't really know who the new subscribers are, um, but I do encourage you guys to please leave comments and feedback. Um, I am a newer player, um, though I feel like I'm, I'm pretty good, I do have a long history in card games, but I'm definitely not the best, obviously. I mean, I'm only in Gold League, but I've only been playing for two weeks. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I am so, like, you guys do me a great honor by subscribing to the channel and letting me know that you like the content and watching. You know, I, before I got into Duelist, um, my channel was uh, all based around competitive Pokemon, um, which I know isn't cards, but it, it was my first kind of step into the foray of competitive games. And, and the channel since going to Duelist, which is arguably a much smaller franchise at the moment than Pokemon, um, and the channel has just grown so much faster and I get so many more views. Um, and it just like really means a lot to me that you guys um, support me uh, and enjoy it, you know? I don't care how big the channel ever gets. I mean, if it gets huge, that'd be amazing, but just knowing that there are people who, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, you know how they say it's better to have a lot of close friends than a ton of, like, Facebook friends? I, that's how I feel, you know? If the channel never gets bigger than 51, sure, at least 51 at the moment of me recording this segment. That's fine with me, but I do really really want to interact with you guys like honestly and truly so please like leave comments not only does it help me um but it helps us because we get to talk more and interact and maybe you have questions that i can help you with or maybe you can give me advice and then i can make better content for you because i'm not so much of a noob um and we can kind of have a great relationship here um but again uh i'm getting I'll, the video is gonna start after this i just want to say thank you and welcome to the new um to the new subscribers and i'll see you guys in the video in a couple seconds hey everybody kyle here so earlier today i was having uh weird frame issues when i was going over the aggressive abyssian deck that i was playing um and so i didn't feel you know so i was trying to kind of finish the video so i could send a note uh support to the, to the developers letting them know that i've been having some weird issues with um, losing frames in the collection screen. It doesn't always happen, it just seems to happen sometimes. It doesn't matter if I'm recording or not, it just sometimes doesn't want to work very well. Um, but I didn't really give a good explanation. Like I played the deck, but I didn't actually, you know, like talk about why cards are in it. So I'm gonna hopefully do that right now and not completely lose all of my FPS. Um, <laughs> so. We're going to go ahead and look at the deck. So, of course, again, Lilith, she's in the deck. She's OP. A zero mana 225. Why wouldn't you run this? Um, the only problem is the fact that if she dies, she lose the game. So, I mean, I think it'd be better not to have her in the deck because then how would you lose? You know what I'm saying? But uh, in all seriousness, so we run two Grass of Agony because we basically need AoE. Um, and what this does, since we have so many ways to remove minions, whether it's our other minions or... It's usually other minions, actually, or sometimes ourselves. Um, this lets us splash three damage onto things, so we can kind of throw this on, if it's convenient, something that has the lowest attack in an area and kill that, so that we take the least the least amount of damage from it. And then the splash will hopefully kill the bigger things around that. Three Void Pulse, because it's called Burn Heal. Um, and what this does is it's just one mana, two damage to the enemy, three damage, or three health to us. This is great because as you saw in the video, hopefully if you didn't watch me, um, if you didn't watch the Let's Try Abyssian Aggro video, I'd recommend you watch that. Um, before or after doesn't matter. It makes more sense to watch this and then watch that, since you'll know exactly what the deck is. I didn't explain it very well. Um, but Void Pulse is just great value. It can be a potential finisher, though it's only two damage, so not always. Um, but it's, it's good. It's fantastic. Two damage, three health. I, I can't explain it enough. Demonic Lure. 
Uh, only two, because the one damage doesn't usually kill anything, and we're not running Shadow Creep, so it's not like we're gonna lure something on a Shadow Creep and then kill it that way. This is more to get Provokes out of the way of our Rush Minions and f out of our way so that we can kill our opponent. Flame Blood, Flame Blood Warlock is an amazing two drop in this deck, because it's a 3 1. So, and it's three damage. So, we, we already burn heal, we have healing, and we have burn, right? So like Void Pulse already counteracts the Flame Blood, the Flame Blood Warlock ability um, while still doing damage. But what this also does is, is since it's a 3-1, if we play it on turn one or turn you know, or turn two, um, most of the early game drops are two threes um, or two twos. And the Flame Blood Warlock can kill either one of them, uh, which is fantastic for us. Also, if it if it you know it could be three more damage on the general too if we have a better way to deal with something else. Healing Mystics because they're a really good solid early game minion and they give us health. Um, we are attacking a lot since we are running artifacts, so getting a little bit of health is not bad. <clears throat> three Jaxies, um because again you need at least I would say nine early game minions, and not only that but the Jaxi, um the mini Jaxie is a good target for our Shadow Reflection, which we'll get at in a moment. Mana Forgers, I put these in here because, I mean, it's a little more 2-drops. We don't really want to throw them out in the beginning of the game because they're only a 1-2, so they're basically going to die for free. But at the same time, late game, they're kind of a mana ramp. So if we only had 3 mana, say, we could throw down a Mana Forger and then cast Aggressive Agony or Avoid Pulse for free, etc., etc. And as long as it stays alive, we keep getting more value out of the Mana Forger. Three Spectral Blades, because they give us plus two attack, um, we can use ourselves to clear a lot of things, as well as do decent damage to the general, to the opposing general if we had to. And since whenever we kill a minion, it restores two health to us, um, it's, it's great for longevity, especially for killing things that only have two health, we effectively don't, or two attack, we effectively don't lose any health. And if we kill something that has more than two attack, we're only taking, you know, it's attack minus two, which is usually not too bad. I mean, we can kill, we can kill a emerald Re emerald rejuvenator and only take two damage from her, so that's fantastic. Um, Al Alcuin lore masters. So again, they're only a three one, but they put a copy of the most recently cast spell into our action bar. So late game, um, we can use them to maybe, for instance, say we have a mini Jaxi on the battlefield, we could shadow reflection it. Alcuin lore master shadow reflection it again. Um, things like that. Very good card. And also, if our opponent plays something that we don't have in our repertoire, like say maybe our opponent casts, um, I'm trying to think, uh, that seven mana, like Vitruvian spell that steals a minion, and say they hit one of our, um, uh, Spectral Revenants with it, sadly we wouldn't be able to cast it on the same turn, but, so I guess that's not a good example. But it, it's, it gives us the most recently cast spell. Um, a lot of times with Lionar, I can steal the one mana heal five to keep myself um, healed up since I'm attacking provokes a lot and things like that. I give a bad example, but like even you can steal strong spells is what I'm getting at. Night Sorrow Assassin is a win condition as well as removal from mid game minions if it needs to be. Um, Night Sorrow Assassin is definitely like a good MVP in this deck. Especially if you have six mana and you can just uh, do a rush or nine damage, um, this deck doesn't really struggle getting someone down to nine HP. Um, Thieves Spine Tigers only two of because the assassin is superior for what we're going for. We're really only worried about the power, um, you know, the attack value on our creatures. Their HP isn't that important to us. Um, but the Thieves Spine Tigers again, they're a three mana rush. We can buff them and attack immediately. Very solid card. Only a two of. Shadow Reflection, so this is one of our potential win conditions. It gives a friendly minion plus five attack. We throw that on a Saber Spine, on a Night Sorrow, on a Mini Jaxi, throw it on a regular Jaxi. You can throw it on pretty much anything, and that thing suddenly becomes ridiculous. Um, it's great. I love it. Um, cool thing, too, if we already have um, the Mana Forger on the battlefield, we can cast the Special Revenant and Shadow Reflection the Revenant, making it into an 11. So that's pretty sweet. Um, two copies of Darkseed. Deal one damage to the enemy general for each card in their in their action bar. This card is really situational. I, mul I, uh, I cycle it a lot 
Because it is 4 mana, so you want to make sure when you're casting it that you um, are getting a lot of value. You want to make sure they have 4, 5, or 6 cards, like 4 minimum. Um, unless you're killing them with it, then it's obviously what you want to do. Um, but you want to like you want to cast it early enough in the game that they can't dump their hand. Um, but you also like don't want to cast it too late. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's you don't want to cast it too early because it does take four mana, so it can be your turn basically. You just have to really cast it at the right time. It's usually really just a finisher to do like four damage or something. One silhouette tracer. Um. Scylla Tracer, only having one of is like a little rough, um, but we have so many other ways to deal with things that provoke us, and provokes aren't super common unless you're fighting Lionar. Um, most decks run provoke in some form, whether it's Lady Locke or the 310 Golems or something, but one Silhouette Tracer is usually good enough for us, um, and again, its main purpose is to get us away from a provoke so that we can maybe move away from the Provoke, and then someone rush minions around us, and then those can run over to the general, etc. Twilight Sorcerers, because Spell Recursion in a burn deck is just a, just a good time. There's no spell in this deck that we wouldn't want to get back, or else they wouldn't be in the deck. The only time this ever whiffs is, like, sometimes you really don't want to get a Daemonic Lure, but there have been times when, when I've cast a Twilight Sorcerer, and he's given me a lure, and that's been what's won the game because he's able to move a provoke out of the way. So Twilight Sorcerer almost always gives you gold back for casting him. And then finally, our big win condition, the Spectral Revenant. It's a 6-6 six, six rush, so it can already fly in and just straight up do 6 damage. Or it doesn't have flying, but he floats, you know what I mean? He can already just like run in and do 6 damage straight to the face. But, since he does 4 damage to the enemy general, whenever um, he damages a minion, he doesn't have to kill it, he just, has to, he just has to damage it. What this basically means is that we can cast him and we can clear something, and we're basically only missing 2 damage on the general. Um, so it's almost better to use Spectral Revenant as removal, because though you're doing 2 less damage to the general, you're, you're retaining board control, and you're doing damage to them. So it's fantastic. And we have two of these. Usually if we can summon one one turn and then summon the second one on the next turn, like that's it. They're they're pretty much screwed. But this is the deck. I can't take 100% credit for it because I didn't invent Aggro Abyssian uh, or even this variant. This um, was basically completely a deck list that I found online. I want to credit the user, so hopefully um, he'll be on Discord tomorrow or she at some point and I can talk to them and I'll put a little annotation in the video um, to say their screen name. The only thing I changed is I put in Mana Forgers and w something else because there used to be three of something here. I put in two Mana Forgers and I'm not sure what else I stuck in here. I think it was the third t Twilight Sorcerer. I think with the changes I made he had... Uh, let me find him. He had... Did I dust them? Oh, I dusted them. That's how bad they were. I crafted them just for this deck, and then I dusted them because I didn't want them. He had in the Iraqi Headhunters, which just doesn't really help the deck in my opinion. Like, yes, it gets plus two attack whenever we summon an opening Gambit minion, but since we don't usually have board control, since a lot of our spells and abilities are focused on damaging the enemy general, we're able to hold the board down, but we don't ever have like dominating control. I just felt like the Headhunter was too clunky. Um, sometimes you would get him early game, and it was really good, but when you actually look at the number of minions we have the opening gambit, right, it's, uh, three, six, nine, oh, twelve. It's not actually bad, I guess, to be honest, but I just feel like the Mana Forger, I'm not actually sure. I'm not actually sure. I'm gonna play more with the Mana Forger, though. But maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those other guys were better. But uh, ever since I put the Mana Forger in, I've had more luck. I guess everyone wants to put their own little spin on a deck, though. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked the video if you watched it. And hopefully you also liked the deck tech. Um, now that everything seems to be working fine and I'm not losing all my frames. The only thing I would change is I somehow would love to put a right of the Undervault in here. But I'm just not sure what to cut. Like, we don't want to cut any rush minions. Our spells are really useful. Like, the only thing I cut, the only thing I can think of cutting is a Mana Forger. Um, which I think I might do and play with that a little bit and see how that is. 
but we'll see. Um, but yeah, excellent. Uh, maybe I'll use this deck a little bit in my laddering videos. I'm, I'm really, really into Magmar, but um, especially since that deck has been... I didn't like straight up copy a deck list for that. It's kind of been, you know, I started the game and I've been evolving my deck over time. So that deck is a lot more personal to me. But we'll see. Yeah, I think I'll probably cut a Mana Forger for one of these rights. Because the main weakness in the deck is when we can't, uh, we don't have enough answers. But excellent, guys. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.